Hey guys, Dan from Miss Grace Gaming, and this time I'm here with um, my brief review on Assassin's Creed the movie. I just watched it. First of all, I enjoyed it. I sort of enjoyed it. This is my brief, brief review of the movie. So I've been looking forward to this movie for a while now, and like I know what happens to video game movies. They, they, they end up being terrible. <laughs> There's no other ways to say it. They end up being terrible. And I've been... But I, this one I was looking forward to for quite a while because... A, it had Michael Fassbender, which I, I think he's a bloody good actor and I really like him as an actor. And I and when he signed on to do this, I thought, oh, he must know something, you know, good about this movie or something. And another part, which I was looking forward to, I'm a big fan of Assassin's Creed. Big fan. And, you know, even though they bloody... They're like on their ninth game now and they finished the story almost four games ago five games ago you know those are the reasons i was really looking forward to this film and um when i started seeing the um i read some i didn't read too much because i didn't want things spoiled but i read some of the reviews when if they, they first got revealed about i think it was a week ago and it was getting panned panned the entire time you know i was reading but the, the, the thing with these some of them, they were probably right what they were saying, but some of them, I was reading them, and they were saying things like, um, like the headline would be Assassin's Creed movie fails at the box office, or something, or fails, fails, or doesn't live up to the hype, or something like that. So you'd be reading this review saying, oh yeah, and you know, it doesn't follow the, the games too much, it spends too much time with this, it's this, that, wrong with it. And then right at the bottom of the review, the reviewer now who wrote this article, which this pissed me off, he'd say, maybe I'll change my mind when I go to see this movie. That's that's the worst clickbait headline I've ever heard, and it pisses me off, and it happens too many times. So th these reviewers, I'm not saying all of them, but three of them I, I read, they hadn't even seen the film yet. They were just going on what they've heard. That's all they were going on. But, you know, according to them, they, this was their review. Bullshit. And shame on you. And I wish I could remember the names of them. Because some of them were, like, supposedly big reviewers. I don't know. But that pissed me off. But anyway, I've had my little rant about that. <laughs> Onto the movie. Michael Fazman, he plays a guy called Callum. Who was, like, an ex-con. Oh, sorry, an ex-con. He gets... There's spoilers, by the way. Mild spoilers. I'm not going to give away too much. But there's going to be mild spoilers. Just so you know. But uh, Michael Fassbender, he plays um, a guy called Callum, and you know he's he's in. I'm not going to give too much, but he's in prison. He's um, he's about to get executed. He gets executed. Obviously, he doesn't get executed. But the Abstergo Templars, by the way, uh, they sort of like not kidnap him, but they take him to their facility. He thinks he's just been killed, but obviously. He's just been put into Abstergo. But now Abstergo, if you've done all the games, they're, they're the modern day sort of front of the Templars. And obviously in the games, the Assassins, the Assassin Brotherhood are the ones who sort of fight against the Templars. The Templars want control. The Assassins want sort of free chaos, I suppose you could say it. But... Um, yeah, you know, that that was similar to the games. And then you had, uh, what's her name, Marion Cot Cotillard? Marion Cotillard? I should have really looked her name up. I, she's a good actress. So that was another reason why I was looking forward to this, because I know she's a good actress. So you had Michael Fassbender, you had Marion Cotillard, 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 I hope I'm saying her name right. And you had Jeremy Irons. And Brendan Gleeson's in it a bit as well. You know, th these are all bloody good actors. So I was looking forward to this film. Michael Fassbender playing Callum. His in the games, they, you have this thing called the anime. I know I'm not. To, I'm not saying anything new to people who've played the games. But for those who haven't played the games, who've just watched this movie, in the games you got the animus. But the animus is just a bed. It's not that big bloody claw hand thing they had him, which I'll go on to soon. But. And it basically, it goes through the the person who, who sits in the animus, animus. It basically tracks his ancestral, through his genes, his ancestral mem ancestors' memories. Like in this case, Aguila, or Aguila, sorry, in Spain. 
1492, I think it is, or 1496. One of those. And, you know, the period uh, part of the film was, I thought it was excellent. They had the costumes brilliant, you know, just like the assa the assassin's um, robes. It had the, you know, they only spoke in Spanish, which was a, a nice little touch. You know, they didn't do go down the route where the games go most of the time, where they, although it's in Spain or France or whatever, they speak in English. But in, in the film, they speak Spanish. So I thought that was a quite a good touch. They're out to find a piece of Eden, or the Apple of Eden in this case, which, like I said, if you've played the games, you know what that is. It's, it's like something the, the what are they called? The previous ra um, previous humans left behind. I'm not going to go into that because it's a bloody long, uh, long ass story. It's a way to control human thought or free, free, free thought. That's what the Templars want, and that's what the Assassins are trying to stop them from getting this uh, Apple of Eden. But, like I said, you know, all that part was great. I, if if the entire film, apart from the little exposition, I couldn't say that word the other day, if the entire film was in Spain, it would, I think it would have been brilliant. Brilliant. Like I said, I enjoyed the film, but I think that was purely down because I'm a fan of Assassin's Creed. I think if you're not a fan of Assassin's Creed, you're going to have a bit of trouble. Possibly a bit of trouble with it. I don't know. But yeah, if it stayed in the pre period pieces, like I said, in Spain 1492, I think it would have no problem. But unfortunately, and this is this is a trait of the games as well. Anyone who's played the games, they'll tell you the, the exact same. Is when you play the games, the, the most fun you have is when you're playing as like Ezio or Aldatori or um, Kenway. Those are the best parts of the games. The worst parts of the games, and anyone should agree with me and i think it's you know it's what most people think is when in the games you go from the the past where you're playing basically the majority of the games to the present which is you're like in abstergo or something or you're fighting you're, you're running away from abstergo that's the boring parts of the game always the boring parts it's, nobody wants to play that part but sometimes it's forced upon you in the later games it's more just cutscenes now where in the earlier games you had to actually spend some time, you know, doing things in the present day, which was, you just wanted to get back to the bloody, you know, the Assassin's Blades and what have you. <laughs> and that's what, the, that's what the film sort of suffers from. It spends way too much time in present day, way too much time. And, you know, the thing I got from the film is when, when, you, when you're watching Michael Fassbender as Aguila, the Spanish assassin, you know, 500 years ago. That's brilliant, excellent. The parkour is excellent. The fight scenes, excellent. You know, the fact that they speak Spanish, excellent. But then, as soon as he goes back to bloody present day, it's like, oh my god. It's like, <laughs> it's, oh, when, when's the next, you know, when are they going to go back to uh, Spain 500 years ago? And thinking about it, you know, they only go there three times. Three times, and it's probably spent... I'd say a maximum, I'm guessing, but this is what it felt like, maximum of half an hour in Spain 500 years in the past. The rest of the movie was in present day. And I think that's where it starts to fail big time. And that's one of the problems. And the other problem it suffers from, and I think this is a big one, because when I thought about it, and I thought about it early on in the film, I couldn't stop thinking of it. In the, like I said, in the games, the Animus is the, which is the, the machine that helps them go back and visit their ancestors' memories. It's just a bed. And they're lying down, you know, you've got bloody whatever, like a, a brain scanner thing or something over your head. And you just basically lie in there and then that's, then bang, you're in the past. But in the film, and I don't know why they did this. I assume it's because, for some reason, directors always want to visualize things. They always want to visualize. All the time. And sometimes it's good, but in this case, I think it it didn't help that film at all. In the film, the Animus is basically a claw which grabs them. Almost like a, um, a movable matrix bed, if you know what I mean. Because it's a claw which grabs them around the waist, or clamps around them, puts something in the back of the... The neck, I assume it goes into the cerebral cortex, cortex, if you know what I mean. And so, whatever they do in the past, they move about, say they're like fighting in the past, you know, they're, they're doing actually physic physically in the real world. And 
I assume they only did this to give Marion Cotillard something to say or something to do because she was in the room constantly watching him, watching Michael Fassbender do all these moves. And like, it now and again, it's fleet back and forth, like in the in Spain 500 years ago, he's like fighting and he's doing all that and stuff. And then in the present day, you can just see him doing the same things, so, which is all fine. But when you th <laughs> when you think about it, and I thought I thought about this early in the film, and this is what sort of spoiled those parts for me, is it doesn't show some of the parts in present day what she's doing in Spain. For example, he's right. He jumps on a horse, and as soon as he's on the horse, I immediately thought of it, and it started to get a bit comical. I thought to myself, so. He's on a horse now, right? And just think, think of this now, right? He's on a horse. He's on a horse. <laughs> so he's like that. He's like that. In the move, in the room, Marion Cotillard is in right now. She's just watching him like that. Not on nothing. <laughs> and as soon as I thought of that, I started to crack up because I constant. Whenever he did something which wasn't fighting, I just. I just thought, she's in that room watching him doing all kinds of weird shit in this animus. And you know, that start, it started to become comical, unfortunately. And that was one of the bigger things for the film for me, because once I, once I thought of that, I couldn't unthink it. And that's the problem with that animus. It was all very fine when you could see him fighting, you know, stabbing people, what have you. But as soon as you thought, she's just watching him bloody, you know doing weird stuff with nothing. <laughs> he looks like a madman on LSD or something. That was one of the little things which spoiled the film for me and I couldn't stop thinking about it. Every time he did something, it just looked weird. It not looked weird, sorry. It In my mind, I could just imagine it watching him like, what the fuck is he doing? <laughs> I think that was one of the biggest things. Uh, yeah, so that was a big... Uh, Big thing which spoiled the film a bit. I, I personally, like I said, I'm a fan of the Assassin's Creed games. I, maybe if I wasn't such a fan, maybe I wouldn't have enjoyed it as much. I did enjoy it because I was looking for like similarities to the games, which, you know, as you do. But I don't think it should have got panned as much as it did because I think on, on the whole, it's, it's a good movie. The actors are great. There's a couple of cheesy lines. <laughs> Again, going back to that bloody animus. It's, um, there's one part in the film where uh, Aguilar, played by Michael Fassbender, he's, he has to, like, do the... We all know it in the game as the leap of faith, where, you know, you go up, you go up to the top of the tallest tower in the city, you synchronise, and then you do it... <whistles> that, into a bale of hay. Which is fine in the games, and in the games, they don't actually call it the leap of faith. We just know it as the leap of faith. In the film... And this is like, ooh, a bit cringy. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's just such a corny line. In the film, obviously, Aguilar does it. And as he does it, in the real world, Michael Fassbender lands like a bloody cool cat. And Marianne Cotillard, I hope I'm saying anything right. Marianne, she's yours. It's the leap of faith. <laughs> no, that was a bit cheesy. So cheesy. But that cracked me up as well. And there's like little things like that. It's, it's annoying. It annoys me. Like I said, I thought it was a fairly good movie. It wasn't brilliant. I could see why it got some of the criticism. But some of the other criticism I think was a bit unfair. But are we ever going to see a good video game movie? I don't know. I don't think it can be done. I don't think it can be done. Like you got the Uncharted movie apparently being done. Like a Halo movie. I, I don't want to see that. Because I guarantee the director will take his helmet off. And I just don't think... I think people should give up trying to make video game movies now. Because I just don't think you can translate a two-hour film to, say, 16 to 21 hours of gameplay which you've interacted with yourself. I just don't think it can be done. But... I, like I said, I'm, I'm not going to keep this too uh, long, but... I think if you're a fan of the games, I think you definitely should go and watch it. If you're not a fan of the games, try it anyway. I think you might be pleasantly surprised because you won't have... Like, people who are a fan of the games, they're going to pick that film apart more than someone who hasn't played the games. So, you know, the pe people who haven't played the games might enjoy a bit more than the people who have played the games. 
Like I said, I have played the games, but I did enjoy it. But I can see why it would have some of the criticism. But uh, yeah, that was my brief review on the film. Like I said, I, I think you should go and watch it. You know, have your own opinion. This is my opinion. And maybe I'm a bit biased, I don't know. But like I, like I said, I, I'm a fan of the games and I'm a fan of Michael Fassbender. So maybe that's why I enjoyed it a bit more than I should have. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed and um, I'm going to hopefully be back with another movie review or something. But anyway, thanks for watching. Bye for now.